On to tonight's keynote speaker, Neil Turek. He is director of the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics, so smarter than all of us. <laughs> what you may wonder is why a physicist is here at a public policy celebration. Well, that's because you don't know Neil and you don't know the Institute, nor the new physics of competitiveness. I know nothing about that. He is originally from South Africa. He earned his PhD at Imperial College in London, professor of physics at Princeton. This is just gonna make you feel bad, just so you know. <laughs> Chair of mathematical physics at Cambridge before he started in his new role as director of Perimeter Institute in a place he had never heard of until well into adulthood. He epitomizes the kind of talent that Canada so desperately needs to attract back to this country that we seem to be doing. He is one of them. He has been awarded the John Torrance Tate Medal of the American Institute of Physics for International Leadership in Physics, as well as the James Clerk Maxwell Medal of the Institute of Physics in the UK for his work in cosmology. You may know him as a TED Prize winner and for his Massey lecture book and tour called The Universe Within, From Quantum to Cosmos. I bet the Prime Minister likes you. He's got a thing with quantum stuff. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Perimeter Institute's Neil Turok. Thanks very much, Rosemary. And thank you to the many distinguished guests and dignitaries <clears throat> who've joined us this evening. This is quite an awesome crowd to speak to. Thank you, Ed Greenspan, and the Public Policy Forum team for organizing this event to honor outstanding public service. And thank you also for allowing me the privilege of saying a few words tonight. I want to dedicate them to a very special person who saw great opportunity here in Canada. And here he is, whoops, here he is. <laughs> on the shores of Lake Huron with Mike Lazaridis. Well, what brought Stephen Hawking to Canada? He cared very deeply about people and about the future. And he knew very well that physics drives progress. So when Mike started a center, Perimeter Institute, where the foundations of physics would be re-examined and renewed, Stephen understood very well and he wanted to help I don't know to what extent Mike fully appreciated it, but Canada's vast natural beauty provides the ideal backdrop for thinking about the universe. Its welcoming, forward-looking society is a magnet for talent. The sense of space and intellectual openness encourage big thinking. Great leap, leaps forward in science have happened before. In ancient Greece, in 17th century Holland, and in 18th century Scotland. In each case, an island of reason was created next to a much more powerful neighbor in a world plagued with crises. The Scottish Enlightenment fostered David Hume, Adam Smith, Robert Burns, James Watt, as well as brilliant physicists like Maxwell and Kelvin. Will Canada do the same? Could there be a Canadian Enlightenment well, I'm going to talk about physics because it's my field, but the lesson, I hope, is much broader. In the 1960s, Cambridge was the best place in the world for a young person like Stephen was at the time to do physics. Well, right now, the best place is here in Canada. On his first visit, On his first visit, Stephen said, the importance of special places and special times where magical progress can happen cannot be overstated. Perimeter is a grand experiment in theoretical physics. I am hoping and expecting great things will happen here. No pressure. And what is our strategy? It's simplicity itself. Bring the most talented young people together and encourage them to shoot for the stars. No compromise on quality, on ambition, on objectivity, on the search for the truth. Canada right now 
is incredibly attractive. It has excellent public health and education. It has a diverse and a hope respectful society which promotes or should promote fairness, honesty, sustainability. Canada today can be an example and an opportunity for the world. Well, nine years ago, we created a master's program at Perimeter aimed to become the best in the world. And today, Perimeter Scholars International, or PSI, that's an in-joke in physics, that's a wave function, receives more applicants per place than any other program in the world. And this year, no, 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 no. <laughs> this year, nearly 95% of our offers were accepted against competition from top institutions like Cambridge, Harvard, Princeton, Stanford. In an increasingly competitive field and world, this success is unprecedented. Our experience echoes that in the Canadian tech sector where similar battles to recruit innovators and entrepreneurs are succeeding. This is great for Canada's economy and for its society. I'd like to offer a big thank you for, to government for supporting fast-track immigration and for helping us to bring top talent here. So I'm afraid I can't resist talking a little about physics. <laughs> And what I'm going to speak about is a discovery made last August by one of the most exciting and wonderful experiments of recent times. And so the, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO, was an international collaboration. And last August, to their great surprise, this is what they saw. So the movie shows the collision of two neutron stars pulled together by their gravity, orbiting each other and emitting gravitational waves, which LIGO picked up. And as they lose energy into those waves, they spiral inwards and eventually collide. There's a gigantic nuclear reaction. Um, basically, the two neutron stars are nothing but large, very large nuclei, about a kilometer across each. And when they merge, and the energy release causes that giant flare, they throw all kinds of chemical elements into space. And uh, so this is what that signal produced. Uh, you're only seeing part of the picture, I'm afraid. But uh, it's the periodic table of elements. And the elements shown in orange, uh, the, the fraction of each element shown in orange, orange is due to processes like that neutron star collision. That wasn't understood until very recently, that gold, um, platinum, uranium are predominant, predominantly created in uh, collisions of neutron stars like the ones we've just see, seen. And uh, so um, this, this uh, event was a very dramatic confirmation of the international nature of science and the great unity of science. You see, it wouldn't have happened without gravitational waves. The two stars wouldn't have lost their energy and collided without the waves which were predicted by Einstein's theory of gravity. Now, the, the observation of that flash of gravitational waves was seen first by LIGO, and then they warned all the other telescopes around the world, and 50 different telescopes at all wavelengths, from X-rays, to radio waves, observed the same event in multiple wavelengths and confirmed what was going on and measured the abundance of these uh, heavy elements which were created in this process. We literally saw before our eyes the origin of the heavy elements, previously not understood. Gold, uranium, rare earths, in fact, uh, many of the riches of the Canadian shield. Actually, Canada is on the leading edge of this science. And some of our researchers in Canada are revolutionizing astronomy. One example is uh, 
I'm having trouble clicking forward. My slideshow has uh, disappeared. There we go. Yeah, one example is uh, the Chime Telescope in Penticton, BC. It's a new kind of radio telescope. It's a relatively cheap antenna, uh, only 10 to 20 million dollars, which is not a lot for such a powerful device. But what makes it special, it's connected to an extremely powerful computer, employing state-of-the-art algorithms, which essentially focus the telescope through software. These algorithms designed in Canada are capable of analyzing data in unprecedented volumes. And a similar telescope called Hyrax, being assembled in South Africa with Canadian scientists again providing software, will consist of a thousand radio dishes. And very exciting to me as a South African is, uh, and an African, are the fact that there will be two outrigger telescopes in Botswana and Rwanda, which will create high resolution images of extreme astrophysics phenomena like the ones we saw, allowing to solve other major mysteries about the universe and how we all got here. Well, uncompromising excellence is the key to good science. But, the, but excellence isn't enough. It must be accessible excellence which allows everyone, the whole of society, to share in the wonder and the fun and the importance of discoveries like these. At Perimeter, we're very focused on leading edge research, but we place an equal priority on educational and public outreach, on public lectures, summer programs for kids, and supporting teachers in schools. Well, Stephen Hawking was probably the most famous science communicator in the world. I think I'll remove the probably. <laughs> so let me end, end with a little story about his second visit to Water Waterloo. One fine afternoon, he and, he and I decided to take a walk in the park outside our institute. And as we went by the public playground, a six-year-old kid started yelling, that's Stephen Hawking. <laughs> but his mum told him it couldn't be. <laughs> Well, next day I got an email saying uh, to me from uh, the kid's dad saying, was that really Stephen Hawking in the park? <laughs> and I replied, and it turned out this kid had read five of Stephen Hawking's books, and he desperately wanted to bring them in and uh, have them signed by Stephen. So Stephen very graciously and very typically agreed, and... Uh, this is their meeting. <laughs> now, what I love most about this picture is that they're wearing the same shirt. <laughs> they're both little kids at heart, driven by curiosity and the desire to make sense of the world. Thank you for listening. <laughs>